Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is October 24th, 2023. Welcome back to another full segment of Weather Center Nazario. We're going to pull no punches once again on the channel this afternoon, guys. We're going to dive right into all the latest information that I have for you because we need to really start raising awareness about what could possibly be sneaking up on us out of the southwestern Caribbean. So if you look at what we have pulled up on the video, first and foremost, this is not an official product. This is not what National Hurricane Center has out there. I'm a little astonished they haven't highlighted another area of interest just yet. Yet. So I went ahead and did some internal forecasting for you guys and mocked up this very somewhat crude chart, I'll admit, for you guys to look at generally what the area it is I'm going to be investigating as we go over the next five to seven days. In the same realm of National Hurricane Center, what we're doing is for 48 hours out, I'm looking at a 0% chance of development down in there in the south and the southwestern Caribbean. Over the next seven days, I went from a 0% chance up to a 20% chance today, and this is likely to continue growing over the next 48 to 72 hours, depending on if our model continue to trend the way that they do. We're also still watching Hurricane Tammy and what it is that she's suspected to do over the next couple of days as well because I do believe in terms of the theories I've been coming up with here internally for the Weather Center, that could play a very substantial role and whatever decides to take shape in the southern southwestern Caribbean could do over the next couple of days once it does get going. So we're going to take a look at exactly what could possibly be forming down there and exactly how Hurricane Tammy could play a role in terms of where it is expected to track if it does get going. Alrighty folks, so last week we had another revision of this global tropics hazard chart. We didn't really cover it on the channel, unfortunately, because I just didn't really see the need to do so because it really hasn't changed a whole lot. The biggest difference is going to be that CPC has that same general source region, the West and the Southwestern Caribbean, highlighted for an above 40% chance of tropical cyclone development. What this means in essence, guys, is the environment and the atmosphere are very favorable for supporting the development of a tropical disturbance or something stronger than that. This is not them forecasting that we will see tropical cyclone formation. They're just suggesting that there's a probability we could because the environment is so conducive. And as we just saw with Tropical Depression 21, the area is definitely primed and the fuses are wet with oil. It's just a matter of getting the match lit in order to trigger off some kind of development down there in the Caribbean. And this time it could be a little more dangerous than what we've seen most of this hurricane season. This will likely update later on this afternoon, if not early evening hours. If you don't have me on Instagram, WXCenter underscore Nazario, I will go ahead and have that plan plastered on this video's page so you guys can drop me a follow. I will update you guys with the latest hazards chart once it does populate from Climate Prediction Center. Okay, so we're starting off with our overnight Euro probabilities. This is the probability of tropical depression formation, and we're going to cut right to the chase. If you go out to the five-day mark and you take a look south of Jamaica, the western periphery of Haiti, we have an area highlighted for about a 35% chance of tropical depression development. The reason I bring this up is we've been seeing incremental increases over the last several days, and I believe since the end of last week we've been keeping a close eye on that area and day by day night by night every time we get an updated run of this probability chart in particular and the tropical storm chart has very very low indications of tropical storm probability starting to highlight in that same area we've been seeing increases in those chances and as you go towards the back end of this loop what's very interesting is this is for the 30th of October you fast forward to the 240 hour mark and then follow it up with 264 and then carry it all the way through to the end and we're actually up to a a 50% chance of tropical depression formation somewhere in the South and Southwestern Caribbean. So it may not be just one. It could potentially be two areas of lower pressure that we have to monitor as we go past Halloween into the month of November, the literal back end, the home stretch, the last 30 some odd days of the hurricane season. We just might be able to round out our name list based off what the Euro is calling for. It gets even better from there, guys. Hang with me. Here's our most recent updates with our German model, the Icon, on the left-hand side and our UK model on the right-hand side. The UK can see far enough out at this point. The 850 millibar wind overlay I have tuned up right here it can only go out to 144 hours. But given we're within about four to five days of possibly seeing development out there, these models are going to do us just fine. You track this through and you can see Hurricane Tammy is still expected to move up to the north-northeast before potentially trying to hook back to the west. The UK model initially was on board with the Icon Icon and the Canadian pushing it towards the Southeast United States. That has since backed off, but if you look, even where I hold the stamp right now, 81 hours out on the Icon, 90 hours out on the UK Met, you can already see a low level spin, a low cyclone starting to form right there in the South and Central Caribbean. And as you go towards the very tail end of both of these model runs, especially the Icon looking very interesting today, you can see we have a closed low that forms up on both of our models. I know that the UK Met is tapped. We were at that 144 hour mark with the 
then look at the icon calling for a tropical storm impact in the island of Jamaica before surging north into central and eastern Cuba and then making its way into the Bahamas as still a closed tropical cyclone at that point. So very interesting stuff, guys. And again, there's layers upon layers I'm going to cover with you guys. We're moving right along. Here's our GFS. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw the disclaimer out. The GFS has actually been doing very horrendous as of recently. And yes, I said it horrendous. The entire lifespan leading up to Tammy's landfall in the Leeward Islands, especially the island of Barbuda, it had been a whole mess, an entire mess trying to forecast what that Invest 94 area was going to do for the longest time until the last second. Then 24 hours of impact, the GFS finally got its act together and was ebbing and flowing really well with the rest of our model data. The only reason we're going to highlight it here is because the GFS is on board that the Caribbean is ready to rock and roll in terms of giving us our next name system, potentially Tropical Storm Vince and maybe even Tropical Storm, if not Hurricane Whitney. We're not going to go that far out yet, guys. Let me take you through the loop. So as you go through time, there goes Tammy still doing her own thing, doing a little bit of a loop de loop out there in the Atlantic. We get a little bit of low pressure off the east side of the Bahamas there, but then take a look at what happens near the Lesser Antilles. There's no cause for alarm, guys. I genuinely do not think we're going to see formation that far to the east in the Caribbean. I believe the, the GFS is highlighting one of our other disturbances or our tropical waves trying to make its way through there. The main reason I bring the GFS up is not necessarily because of where or when it forms a cyclone. It's the fact that our 12Z data does form a cyclone. So the model, the GFS, is definitely believing that the Caribbean is ready and has all the necessary ingredients to support tropical storm, if not hurricane formation, over the next 7 to 10 days. You track this all the way through, and there you have it. There goes our cyclogenesis to the south of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. And this is honestly worst case scenario. I really do hope the GFS is just being very bullish back to its usual tricks just in time for Halloween because you can see a hurricane makes landfall through Jamaica, barrels through the Cayman Islands, still strengthening before it goes full major hurricane to the south of Cuba and makes its way north into Cuba and the remaining portions of our islands down there, which is very, very lethal if this takes place. Definitely not putting a whole lot of faith in this solution here. All I'm highlighting for you guys is that the GFS with its latest analysis data being plugged in for 12Z does think the Caribbean has everything it needs to form something up. Now, I haven't pulled up the Korean model in a little bit because I will admit it got a little dipsy duda on us in terms of what Hurricane Sammy was expected to do. But now, just for another layer of evidence for you guys, the KMA is singing the same tune as the majority of our other model platforms. You follow this through and you can see what it decides to do with Tammy. And then right at about the 72-hour mark, take a look at that area of lower pressure already showing itself in the Southern Caribbean. You take this through towards the very back end of the loop and once again, it consolidates into a full tropical cyclone, lifts towards the north and continues to deepen down before going stagnant over top the Cayman Islands. This is not the full run of the KMA. I will check back with it to see exactly what it does as you go further in time. And it's very interesting because I'm starting to notice this trend with Tammy as well. Look at how she kind of does a loop-de-loop -loop out there and comes back around strengthening. I don't really think this is going to happen, but I do find it very interesting that we have had a couple of deterministic models show this circular fashion, keeping her alive for a little bit longer before once again ejecting out with the incoming of our next major frontal system. You could see highlighted by those green areas of wind shading coming off the United States and into the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to be a close call. We'll talk about that here in a moment, but whatever does get going, it's going to be a very close call, not only with what Hurricane Tammy does, but with this next trough and surface level frontal feature coming down out of the United States central portions that's going to interact and definitely determine where this system tracks if it does start to form up. All right, so this is exactly why the Caribbean is ready, and it is primed and it is hot for some kind of formation out there. We did have Tropical Depression 21, which further solidifies our case, but let me take you through the steps as well to highlight some of the dynamics because we are still in an El Nino year. And typically, we don't really have formation out there. It's not atypical to have cyclones form out there in the Caribbean this time of year. But during a high, or I should say a moderate to high-end El Nino season, like we've been forecasting all hurricane season and before that, for that matter, this is a little abnormal. I'm going to tell you the truth. We have the Euro on the left and the GFS on the right. And you can see that both models are definitely thinking that we will have some breakaway energy create some wind shear for the Central Caribbean, but once that system gets going, we have a very nice anti-cyclone that parks itself over the Central, Eastern, and the whole, we'll say the whole Caribbean for that matter, honestly, especially when you look at the GFS. We have a lot of good favorable wind flow across the Caribbean, especially the Central and Southern portions, and it looks like because of that upper level ridge, you can also see mainly on the GFS, the Euro may come aboard with this as well. It's going to take some time. I 
I'm waiting to see what 12Z shows today, but you can definitely see on the GFS, and I do agree with it here. I'll go ahead and highlight it for you guys. The GFS is showing with that subtropical ridge taking hold out there, it will inevitably affect where our subtropical jet flows, and you can see a majority of the bulk shear over the southeast further inland, avoiding any kind of contact with what low pressure center may try to form out here and head to the northwest or the northeast. So it goes without saying, we do have favorable wind shear conditions, and I'm not even going to show you the relative humidity out there because with Tropical Depression 21 and all that Central American gyre, that overall area of low pressure inducing tremendous amounts of thunderstorm activity for several weeks now over Central America, the Caribbean, and especially the East Pack, we have plenty of moisture to go around for something to get going. And then last but not least, we are starting to see a cooling trend near the coastal United States in terms of our sea surface temps, but you can see that we are still actually above average for this time of year across the Caribbean, especially our central and southern source region. This chart is indicating we are about a degree and a half to almost two degrees Charlie, still above normal water temperatures for the late end of October and into November. So this is a little concerning, especially with the amount of agreement we have almost across the board from all of our models that there could be a low pressure center and an increase in overall moisture content over the hot waters of the Caribbean that will try to consolidate and form our next tropical storm. All right, before we wrap up this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of my theorizing, my hypothesis in terms of what this system could do and where it could possibly track. This time of year, historically, most systems that form in the Central and Southern Caribbean want to track north and across Cuba and out to sea, maybe potentially opposing a hazard for Bermuda down the road. I'm going to go ahead and say this might not be the case this time. And hear me out. Stay with me, guys. I'm going to try to take you step by step through what my thought process is, and hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down. So all hurricane season, we've had the life-saving grace of hurricane after hurricane coming off of Africa, forming up just to the southwest of the Cabo Verdes in our main development region, and kicking out to sea. As a result of that, that area of significant low pressure, the hurricane carving a path between all of our Atlantic high pressure, has led from one storm after another to follow the same path, if you will. In this case, if Tam does decide to move to the west, she's going to cause that same sort of pattern in our lower level environment, opening up a channel for that Southern Caribbean feature to drift north and potentially more to the northwest. If you track this through, this is our Canadian model. The Canadian model is ebbing and flowing very well with our icon model, so I'm going to use this for reference for now. If you track Tammy, you can see her make that marked shift to the west. And if you look over the southeast United States into the northern periphery, the very northern extent of the Caribbean and some of the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico, you have all this red shading, that high pressure. Take a look as Tammy moves off to the west, how that high pressure vacates and is replaced with all that lowering pressure. And if you look just at the colors particularly, you can see now we have weak high pressure out across Bermuda over the western central Atlantic and an area of low pressure leading straight in towards Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and up towards the Bahamas. So it'll be very interesting to see if Tammy holds true to what the National Hurricane Center is saying or what some of our other ensembles are predicting her headed back out to sea that could change things down the road for whatever decides to take shape in the Caribbean. This is one of two possible theories and I'll take you into the second one in a moment. Overall guys what I'm highlighting here is what has been a saving grace most of the hurricane season for our Cabo Verde long track systems out there during the months of August and September could be a potential fatal outlier in the scenario that we have taken shape a little bit too close to home. All right now we've shifted gears and we're back over the United States. The reason being is all of our models are thinking that we're going to have a very very, very dense polar plunge across the Great Plains, coming across the Rocky Mountains into the central and eastern parts of the U.S. And if you take this through, this is our Zero Z Euro, the most recent long-range Euro we have at this time, at least the time of shooting this video. And you track this through, you can see that that very massive polar high comes all the way down into the Appalachian region, the mid-Atlantic states. And that is a very dense and powerful high, guys. That's a 1035 high. Typically for this time of year, we see that hanging out over the Great Lakes or the Northeast supporting our nor'easter systems like the one we just had passed through. For it to migrate that far to the south, not only are we going to get cold down here across the Gulf Coast in the state of Florida, but that thing's going to butt right up against whatever tries to come out of the Caribbean and either send it packing to the northeast or potentially shear it apart altogether. On top of that, another theory that I have for that second round of probability that I showed you earlier on the Euro probability chart is since we have such a massive high and frontal system coming down, perhaps the tail end of that frontal appendage 
appendage. You see all that moisture in the bottom right hand corner of the chart. Maybe that's what the euro is also picking up on that could potentially form, if not Vince, down the road for that second dose of higher probabilities, if not Whitney, after we get whatever decides to take shape between the 28th and the 29th. We could see a frontal induced cyclone to round out our entire hurricane season list for 2023. And to tell you the truth, guys, I would not be very astonished if Mother Nature at that point decides to wash your hands of the hurricane season and say, we're done. So a lot to talk about. I didn't want to focus too much on Tammy right now because the future with her is very uncertain and she could play a vital role in what takes shape and what happens with whatever entity decides to form up in our Caribbean source region. Thank you all for tuning in, guys. I think I'm going to go live this evening. To be determined, I will blast out an announcement and schedule it preemptively on my channel so you guys get the notification and know exactly when that live stream could potentially happen tonight. I'm going to see exactly what the 12Z Euro says once it does populate as well as what the rest of our ensemble products show later this afternoon. I I hope this all makes sense to you. I hope that we can start getting a little bit of awareness down there for the likes of Jamaica, as well as the Cayman Islands, Cuba, Dominican Republic potentially as well. And it looks like San Andres down there in the Southern Caribbean could see the full extent of this storm taking shape, or at least the low pressure center beginning to develop before it becomes a bonafide tropical cyclone. So we're watching for everybody down there in the Caribbean Sea right now. This could be a lot closer for comfort and a little bit more lethal to tell you the truth based on what I'm seeing here. It's not a full forecast. And if you remember at the very beginning, I'm giving it a 20% chance of development over the next seven days. I'm going to adjust that and I will keep you posted on what my internal predictions look like, especially since National Hurricane Center doesn't have anything for it just yet. But we'll see you again very soon. Thank you all for watching, especially if you made it to the end of this wonderful video. I hope everything has been great for you guys. You had a great start to the week with Monday and Tuesday continues to follow suit in rapid pace. We'll see you again very soon, guys. In the meantime, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.